Hello, thanks very much for joining me again. This week's Stillwater pattern is a fly called the Sugar Cube. It's a dry fly and I've found it to work extremely well in September. So I thought I would share it with you today. And in the vise, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to tie it in a size 10. There's a Hanak 333 barbless hook and it's a light wire hook. The thread I'm going to be using is the Ultimate Tine Silk from Fish On and it's it's in brown this one so first things first I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on the shank of my hook as always with the silks the these very thin silks they do need a bit of bedding in onto the shank and I find personally that wax is just not good enough for the job so I like the super glue it does a grand job. So I'm going to bring that up to about an eighth of an inch from the eye of my hook. Next thing then, I'm going to use a little bit of foam that I've cut. Uh, you can see here it's, it's square and I've simply taken one of the large blocks of foam that you get for booby eyes and I've cut out, as you can see here, a small strip of uh, foam to make this this piece that I've got here. Now I don't need all that obviously but I am going to tie it on as is and then trim away as I need. Hence the name Sugar Cube of course. So I'm going to come in put it slightly past the bend of my hook. I can always trim it down later and first of all I'm just going to put a very gentle couple of loops in to hold it into place. Tilt it back, make sure you've got plenty of room there. Bring one thread wrap in front, two, and then rest your thread. Now what I want to do is trim the remainder of the foam that I'm not going to use. Make sure you don't catch the front bit and just trim it away. Put your remainder to the side for your next fly. Then what you can do gently with this is just trap the rest of that in. Now I uh, emphasize the gentle work because if you're too firm with the ultimate tine silk you'll just cut right through your foam. So I've just brought my thread to the front here and what I'm going to do next is add plenty of wax. I want to get a layer of wax onto this because my hackle is going to go here eventually and I'm going to build a post simply by trimming round. Now I can bite right in now with my thread and come all the way to the bottom. Now I could probably come a bit further but I'm going to tie this quite short. For the rib I'm using the Vivas P01. It's just a mylar type uh, rib here and I'm going to catch that in at the base of the fly. A couple of turns. Make sure it's well in there and then just put it to the side. The dubbing on this fly I'm going to use uh, some of Trout Line's Mad Rabbit. This is Mad Rabbit Plus actually. Um, and it's the, in a natural colour. You can obviously use any kind of dubbing you like. Pine Squirrel works. Um, some people like this fly in ginger or claret. But uh, I'm going to do this natural one. You can see there's quite a lot of shimmer in the dubbing. It's got a little glister in it. And I'm just going to dub that on. As you would normally. Try and get it nice and thin at the bottom end and then at the top it doesn't it doesn't matter as much. Uh, I can always add a little bit more if I haven't got enough dubbing on. So I'm going to bring that round. All the way up to the top. And I'm going to add a little bit more dubbing because I just want to get a little bit of taper into my body. 
not much, but just a little bit. Like so. Okay, I'm going to just remove the erroneous fibers. And as always, when I use these sort of uh, material type ribs, I'm going to come in with my super glue brush and just get a little layer on. As always, make sure that when you bring this round, it is the super glue side that you're bringing over your dubbing. So I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm going to bring that up. Now this is a great wee fly, and I say wee fly, I'm tying it in quite a large size here, but if you tie it in sort of 12s and 14s, it's a, it's a good fly, and with it, the post really stands out on the water. So I just caught my ribbon there at the end, and before I do anything else, I'm going to use my, uh, what's left of my cape here, and select a sort of brown feather. I've already done that. It took a bit of finding actually to find something that was of use. Now with a feather here you can see there's the dark brown side and the other side. Now I want the dark brown side, the shiny side, to be face down in the water. It floats better and it, it looks better to the fish. Now before I tie this in, I'm just going to add a bit more wax to my thread. And I'm going to catch it a couple of times in here. One, two, three. Then I'm going to come round the front. And I don't know if you can see there, the, the stalk of the, the um, feather is there. I'm going to catch that in too with a few turns. Now, I'm just going to remember, I've just made the stalk a little long, so I'll just snip that away. Next, a little bit more of our dubbing. It's just the same. You can put a contrasting dub on if you wish. Something like Hens 45 or a Black Seals Fur, Highland Peat maybe. Whatever takes your fancy, but I, I just keep it simple. So I'm going to push that up like so. And I'm going to bring that around the front. Once in there, then I'm going to come round the back of my post and rest my thread in front of the post. So next, I can bring my feather round, and I'll just see how many turns I can get. I like to get a minimum of four, because uh, it's not this foam post that keeps your fly in the surface film. It's, it's the amount of feather you've got in the wing. So once I've got that round, I'm going to bring my thread carefully up to the side of the fly and clinging to the body virtually, I'm just going to come round making sure that I don't trap many feathers. And I want to do that two or three times just to make sure I've trapped in my feather. Once I've done that, I'm going to put in a couple of half hitches. Like so. I'm going to open my vise up, tilt it to the side so I can see what I'm doing. I'll just turn it so you can see. So you see I've got my thread here and I've got my tail end. Now I'm not going to pull any of that. I'm going to come in carefully with my snips. Sorry that you can't see, but I'm just removing my thread and also the waist of the feather. And then to finish off, I'm just going to use a little bit of UV Vanish, the tiniest amount, and that's what I like about the Solaris, the tiny little brush 
you can see it's just a tip. I can come in and just put the tiniest little bit on and cure that off. Now you, you, you can use varnish uh, with a dubbing needle or you could uh, use a little bit of super glue but I just find that's as easy as out. And then if you wish, get your dubbing brush, tease out a couple of the fibres of the dubbing. And there you have the sugar cube. Now you can see this in um, quite a good distance from the boat or the bank as the case may be. Uh, it's a real good sighter. So you, you can always lock eyes on your fly quite quickly once you've cast. There we go. That's the sugar cube. As I say, there's um, lots of ways of varying it by changing the colour of the dubbing. It's up to your imagination. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you're enjoying what I'm doing here, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. So that's your first method. If you want to make them up, that's how to do it.